So, Nicole, you just saw that body cam footage of the police officer, about 22 seconds. In that time, can you just tell me what you just saw? Sure, it's very chaotic. You hear gunfire. You can see why this is a stressful circumstance. And you can, you can hear the stress escalating in the police officers' voices as well. So, stress has to do with what? Their decision making and whether or not they perceive that this is a life or death circumstance and whether or not deadly force is appropriate in order to prevent further damage from happening. So a matter of fact, the person we have to listen to, the most important person is defendant about what he was thinking, whether he felt that he or his partner was threatened because if his partner was threatened, he could protect him also. We're going to be listening to Roy Oliver on the stand. He was a police officer who served prior, prior term in Iraq. We're going to hear about that later, but right now, Let's hear, buddy, what says about that body cam, what we just saw. Welcome back to the case of Texas versus Roy Oliver. And because it's occurring in Texas, we have Nicole DeBoard here, who is a Texas attorney. Nicole, I want to ask you a question about this. Now, police officers have a latitude when they feel that they're threatened or that their partner's threatened, that they can shoot to kill, correct? That is correct. It's the same in Texas as all over. But this particular officer also had a psychiatric exam or psycholo psychological exam that said he may feel so insensitive to threat that his judgment may be impaired in evaluating the risk of danger. So how do you, how do you mesh those two? How could you have a psychiatric exam that says that and he's still a police officer and then when we come to a dangerous situation, he perceives danger but his partner, Officer Gross, does not. How does that happen in Texas? You know, it doesn't really seem reconcilable, but maybe it was such a circumstance with all of the gunfire that you'd already heard that it was just that stressful, and he really did believe that his partner was about to be run over. And that's the key here. Whether this jury thinks that he is telling the truth when he says, I thought that vehicle was about to hit my partner. And if they believe that, then he is justified. If they don't, he is not. So, so when you come upon a scene like he did, he said when there's gunfire, you have to identify, and I think he said locate and stop, correct? Did he have enough correct. time to identify where the shots came from, locate, and really stop who the shooter was? It's possible. I mean, I, I'm not sure that parsing out the exact time in these kinds of cases is productive. Police officers are always forced to make decisions in a very, very short period of time, milliseconds. And they, they don't have a lot of time to sit and play back a video or try to make sense of what they're seeing and think it through logically. Okay. It's so, really about training. So that's exactly how the police officers get the advantage, and they should have the advantage because their jobs are very, very stressful. They're in danger a lot of the times. Stay tuned. We're going to be back with more. You can't use deadly force on an unarmed passenger. You can't use deadly force unless you're protecting somebody who's going to, you believe, get killed. Here, the defense, the, the defense, Roy Oliver, says he believed his partner was going to get killed. What you just heard was a police use of force expert, Philip Hayden, for the prosecution, who said and reiterated that Officer Gross said he was not in danger, and therefore the officer who, who shot Officer Oliver also wasn't in danger because the car that Jordan Edwards is in, who he was a passenger, was going backwards at five miles an hour. So he's saying that this is incorrect, this is improper, this is improper use of force. But Nicole, uh, from, Nicole Boardman from Texas, I've seen so many cases where the jury jury then says, well, maybe manslaughter, maybe something less than murder, because they want to give the officer the break because they're in danger every day of their lives. What happens that's in Texas? Exactly, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, jurors really do try to put themselves in the shoes of an officer in a very stressful situation in these cases. And it is possible to see a lesser included in a case like this for exactly those reasons. Um, the fact of the matter is that you can't shoot at a car to stop it from escaping, and that is a question, I'm sure, at the back of a lot of folks' minds right now. Okay, so one of the things that happened in the courtroom the last couple of days is that the prosecution wanted to use an incident two weeks before that happened where Officer Oliver, who was in his shorts, off-duty, with a, apparently a Texas Rangers shirt, uh, was rear-ended on a wet, wet, wet road uh, by four women in a car. A couple of them were minors, but they were women. And he came out to that car, and he came out, and he had his gun drawn, and they said 
that he had pointed at their heads. And the judge wouldn't allow that in because that was really that was really uh, proclivity evidence that if he did this, he's likely to do he was likely to kill Jordan Edwards. Okay, so we've been asked to, to, to discuss Nicole. Why was it allowed in? Why was this evidence allowed in on cross examination? Can you tell us? Because I know the answer. I know you know the answer, but some of our viewers would like to know the answer. Sure. I mean, it's a situation where, you know, he's potentially committed a crime against these women. It sure sounds like he has. And you're allowed to bring in what's called 404B or character evidence in that kind of a circumstance when you're saying, especially if, if your whole defense is, I wouldn't do something like this unless it was necessary. But the judge wouldn't allow it to come in for character evidence. But it did come in on cross-examination when Oliver took the stand. And the difference is here is that's exactly what happened. Once he takes the stand, any type of acts where he's denied, where there's, where there's allegations, that he has been a, a liar, where he has fabricated evidence, where he's fabricated testimony comes in. So the judge did allow, and a matter of fact, the defense opened the door. They crossed it, they examined him and brought out the incident where he stopped these girls with his guns drawn. They say that his gun was drawn. He says it wasn't drawn. That morphed into another incident when he went into court and he said that uh, uh, he used the F word with the prosecutors. Uh, he denied it. It morphed into another incident. And all these bad incidents showing that this could be a really, this could be a hothead. This could be the kind of guy that the that the psychological report says could could perceive danger when there's none there. All this came in on cross examination. Was that correct? I, I think it certainly could have been. I mean, you can bring in extraneous, what we call extraneous bad acts, to show motive, opportunity, intent when the defense is refuting some of those things. So if the defense, and it is, is refuting that he intended to kill him in cold blood or that he intended uh, to do something other than protect the safety of his friend, um, if they're saying that his motive in doing so was different, uh, and that his opportunity was there, um, these are all things that a judge might say, well, they've made a uh, an impression with the jury that perhaps there's something different so here. The, we're so the, the judge here, what the judge did is gave a charge and said you could only use it for his credibility, to assess his credibility. I don't know how a jury decides the difference between character evidence and assessing credibility. They heard that he pulled the gun, according to these young women, on young women and put it to their heads. And they, just like Jordan Edwards, felt that they were in threatened. But we're going to stay with this case because this is an interesting case. And guess what happens on Monday? We get to hear closings, the closings in Roy Oliver, Texas versus Roy Oliver. You won't want to miss it. You've been with us all this time. Stay tuned. Uh, we're going to see you on Monday.